Hello, everyone. I am Jeremy, and thank you all for listening to this presentation titled Viewing Multiple Interactive Plots Using Plotly and Telescope JS. Currently, I am working in a lab which deals with a lot of lipids. Hence, I would like to start this presentation with an introduction of what lipids are. Lipids are organic compounds that are mostly insoluble in polar solvents such as water. The most common lipids are triglycerides and cholesterol, measured in the blood lipid panel test. The cell membrane is often described as a phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid is another class of lipids by itself. A lesser known lipid called ceramide can be found in the skin used as a protective barrier as well as cell signaling during the wound healing and immunity response process. Given a sample, how does our lab measure the lipid inside, especially the uncommon ones? Well, we add some chemicals inside to separate the lipids from the DNA and proteins. Next, we create a list of transition to tell the machine, the mass spectrometer, what kind of lipids to measure. The machine measures the lipids in the form of peaks given in the range of acquisition time. We integrate the area under the peaks, and this is what we have here. It is ideal that the variation of peak areas should come only from the sample itself. However, in reality, such variation can come from other sources, such as when different pipettes are used or the presence of contaminant ions. As the mass spectrometer is a very sensitive machine, Variation from these external sources can also be measured as well. To check the, for the severity of these unwanted variations, we have to use quality control samples. One example is the batch quality control, or BQC. It is created by creating small aliquots of the study samples and pulling them together. The put samples are then reallocated back into new aphidov tubes, and these little aliquots here are the BQCs. They can be placed before the first sample, at regular intervals in between the samples, as well as after the last samples. We then plot this injection sequence bar chart using the area as the y-axis and the injection sequence as the x-axis. We then perform some statistical summary and we want to keep transitions whose BQC coefficient of variation is low. We then report this result as a PDF file containing injection sequence bar charts, one transition per page. However, as time passes, our lab has begun to accept samples that are very, really large, up to a few thousands. As a result, static bar charts and scatter plots will no longer work as it is hard to see the points within the confined spaces of a static plot. In addition, the number of transitions have increased to over 500. This gives a PDF file of over 500 pages full of plots. Lastly, to improve the quality of our data, we have different QC sample types as well. And this gives rise to new plots such as the ring cut plot and the dilution series plot. In the end, we'll have a uh, multiple PDF files with over 500 pages full of plots. And looking at these plots individually is very tedious and time consuming. Hence, we need to find a better solution to this. Clearly, there is a need to switch the R packages that is able to give interactive plots, and probably seems to be the natural choice for me. However, the distribution of such results to collaborators and managers remains a challenge. This is because interactive plots could not be stored in PDF files. While I did consider using Shiny, I was precluded from using it firstly because I lacked the expertise to maintain a secure web server to run these Shiny applications that meets the standard of the university's IT team. Secondly, I cannot expect my collaborators and managers to be able to install R by themselves or install all these R packages and run the code to rebuild the Shiny application just to view the results. It is just too much work for them. Transcope.js is able to 
create these kind of outputs such that I can compress the folder into a zip file and send the data to them. And when they have the data, they can just double click on this index.html file, give a result something like this, where they can see them or see all these plots. And they can also filter them based on their favorite trans classes. For example, we can see just the ASL Kani teams, for example, which there are 18 of them. And out of the 18 of them, we can see which one has high variation. So let us use this quality control, uh, TQC instead, and see how it goes. Well, we can see that the TQC was quite high because of something wrong with the machine in the beginning of the run. For the next transition, the variation is very high because of low signal, because most of the points are below the limit of detection. Now that I've given my reasons why I use these two packages, I would like to now share some tips and resources that will help you guys be, to be able to give these plots by yourself. Thanks to Open Science, I'm able to create a walkthrough example using Quarto, using a published lipidomic data set. This slide shows that it is possible to create a new column full of plot plots, and this is how it is done. You first use the dplyr mutate to create this new column, and then you use the pmat underscore plot function from Telescope.js to create these plots. And then this is how I usually call the plots, like for some of the first for the first century trans transition, this is how the dilution plot looks like. It, providing metadata information as TransGS Cognostics is important because it helps to improve the user experience, especially for those who are using it for the first time. This information can be displayed when pressing the information button here. On the other hand, it can also be seen when users hover onto the buttons at the panels. I have provided a step-by-step -step process of how you can do this in my quarter example. Next, we go to results distribution. To export a Trilisscope JS object, what you need to do is to set your working directory and then call the Trilisscope function with the correct parameters in the R console. Ensure that your path, folder path is correct and that self-contained is set to false to create these objects here. Clicking on the HTML file will give you the Trilisco plot, and all you have to do is compress them to give you this zip file. To export a quarter document with Trilisco JS objects, the changes that you need to make is on the quarter, so YAML or YAML configuration. Ensure that it's set to false for the self contained parameter. And then clicking on the button render will give you these folders as well in green and in blue. And then Choosing all these highlighted folders, you can compress them into a zip file and send to your collaborators. I have all these exported examples in my release section of this GitHub page. This GitHub page is also where the source code of my quarter uh, report is. With that, I would like to end my presentations with these three points, saying that quality control samples are useful, to check for unwanted variation, and that the Plotly and Triscope JS package are useful in my work. And there is a quarto example to help you be able to do it by yourself. And if you are missed the descriptions below in the image, you can be seen when you hover them, or you can, because they are alternative text and can be read using the screen reader. So here's how it goes. Let's see Chrome Vox spoken feedback is ready. Figure showing two workers praising the presenter for providing a good visualization report. So with that, I end my presentation and I hope that you enjoy the conference.